everyone. Well done, John. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Lamb himself. Thank you for coming out to drum you, buddy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's it, a pleasure. This place is awesome. Thank you, thank you, yeah. And if you guys don't know who John Lamb is, he is the author of The Anatomy of Drumming. You have also been teaching and playing since you were 15? Uh, no, for 15 years. Yeah so, uh, yeah, so I've been playing professionally since I was 15. There you go. And then teaching for about 50, yeah. yeah there you go. That's about, yeah. Yeah. And um, John, you're a very educated guy. He's got his uh, bachelor's in music psychology and in biology. You have your master's in education, specifically in adult education and online learning, is what um, uh, what I know. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you also been, you have a feature in Drum Magazine that you do every so many months. You have an article in there. Um, you've studied with Bernard Purdy. Uh, you, you, you've done a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do lots of different kinds of things. Jack of all trades. Jack kind of. of all trades, yeah. yeah. And um, if you guys want to follow John online, you can follow him on Twitter at, uh, at Anatomy Drumming. You can also follow him on Instagram and Facebook at Anatomy of Drumming as well there, or johnlandrums.com. So follow him, check out what he's up to. Um, cool lesson, man. You got a cool lesson in store for us. I see you got some props, some skeletons and all oh, that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, before we get into the lesson, just some quick housekeeping things. First off, John, you are not only the author of Anatomy of Drumming, you also have a book called Start Playing Drums, a Beginner's Guide. Mm -hmm. Very so simple. This is for adults who always wanted to play drums and never got around to it. So Perfect. And then your first book called A Matter of Time. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is for three lucky watchers or viewers of this lesson, once we put this on YouTube, we're going to give away a copy of each one of these books to three lucky winners. All you have to do is submit a comment below on the YouTube once you're watching this saying what your favorite part of the lesson was or what your favorite part of John's uh, playing or his, his teachings was. And we are going to pick a random winner from there and ship you a copy of each of these books. So there's going to be three winners. As soon as this lesson gets on YouTube, we're going to give you a month um, from the start date, and we'll pick a winner from there. So if you guys want, submit a comment below. Um, also, if you guys are watching this for the first time and you like what we're doing, you got to follow us on Dromeo.com. Sign up to become a member if you haven't already. We have a really cool course that we're filming exclusively for Edge members called A Guide to Healthy Drumming. And John, you're the guy to teach that stuff, man. Yeah, so, so we're going to talk today about, uh, well, we're going to do a... a uh, thing that I do with all my students, uh, which is we're going to do a quick overview of what you need to know about the seat, the feet, and the hands. Uh, the, those are the guides. All right, so the first thing, the most important thing about your playing is how you sit. It's also the most overlooked thing. Uh, so, but the way that you sit is really important. Uh, so three basic topics. The number one is the way that you sit works as a modifier for your Technique. So, to think about it this way, the, in order to play the drums, you have to move. I mean, that's, you know, the drums don't play themselves, you have to move your body. Mm -hmm. And so, as you're talking about, uh, you know, how it is that you play and what it is that you're capable of doing, you're talking about your body, right? And yeah. you're talking about, you know, what you got in the, in the bank, what you have, all that stuff, right? So, the, the way that you set, uh, is, well, let's start off with this. So the first word, uh, so when, we, when I talk about the way that you sit, right? And there's a, there's a big word that I'm trying to avoid here, which is called posture. Okay. So Why are you trying to avoid that word? The reason is because for most of us, if we hear the word posture, there's this idea, yeah. stiff and rigid. And that's terrible. That, you, you do not want that. Because mm -hmm. the body's designed to move. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about playing, when you're you know, anything, you, know, you need to move. You can't be here and then play there. That's, that's not good for anybody. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, you know, it's a net loss, right? So, so you need to be able to move your body, right? And so just to avoid that idea of, of being stiff in any way, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't like the word posture, but I revert to it because, well, there's no other word like it, right? Yeah. But the idea of posture that I have, uh, you know, is balance. So, I've got this uh, prop number one over here. Yeah, we've got some cool props. Now, before I actually even get yeah. into this, mm -hmm. what is the main focus of this lesson? Because anatomy of drumming, is, it's, that's a big term. I mean, you've got the book here, which obviously you can see, it's got some great graphics in it too. Um, but what is the whole point of studying this, uh, studying the anatomy of drumming? Oh, so well, the idea is to move better, feel better, play better, right? Cool. So through, through understanding the way that you move, mm -hmm. the way, the, how you are built, through understanding 
you know, how the body works, you're going to move better. Mm. If you move better, you're going to be able to do better, perform better, but you're also going to feel better yeah. and avoid injury. You know, maybe you can't eliminate it, but you can avoid it. Cool. Yeah. All right, so what's so, his first prop? We got a guitar right. here. So, the guitar, yes. So, the, the idea here is the word I'd like to replace posture with is balance. Okay. So, when you're standing, the, the idea is that the bones hold the body up. The, not the muscles. Okay. Right? The muscles provide the power, but the bones provide the support. In a, in a sense, you can think of it like the cymbal stand here. Right? If there was nothing, uh, if, if you snapped your fingers and your bones disappeared, you, your brain would just like thwoop, right on the floor in the same way that if you snapped your fingers and the stand disappeared, the cymbal would fall. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so the bones hold us up. They accept that weight and they deliver it into the floor. In the same way that when I put it like this, the neck of the guitar takes the neck, takes the weight from the head and delivers it in the floor. Okay. Right? Yeah. So go ahead and hold this up and put your finger right there. Okay. Right. And press down and reduce that pressure. I am going to keep it from falling, but reduce that pressure until it falls. Right. Okay. Yeah, Barely yeah. anything is required. Barely holding right? onto it. And uh, in this way, the, when you are at balance, when you're sitting well or standing well, mm -hmm. the, the, your bones are accepting that weight and your muscles don't have to do a whole lot of work. Okay. Right? Yep. But when you're off balance, let's do that same exercise. So go ahead and hold it right there. Okay. Press there. And then I am going to keep it from falling. Whew. Okay. Right? It's a big difference. Yeah, I can't put any less, it's just going to fall. Right? Mm -hmm. So the way that you set turns into a big modifier for how much work your body has to do. So, for example, if you uh, um, uh, are, so if, if you sit up, and uh, uh, let's try your feet, right? So I'm gonna turn over, maybe turn over this way. If you, if you sit at balance, the weight of your body is gonna go into your seat, and the weight of your legs is gonna go into the floor, but when you sort of collapse and you slouch, now your feet are required uh, to push back up off of the floor. Make sense? Makes sense. Right? And that makes it a lot harder to pick them up so that you can play the pedals. Oh, okay. Right? You know, so, and if I did pick them up, I'm gonna fall forward immediately. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because now they're, they're, they're providing posture support. And you see a lot of drummers who are leaning into the drums. Yeah, oh, okay. and, and, and that's for a couple reasons, and, and uh, maybe if we have time we'll get into to them. But that's, uh, this sort of inside curl thing is a big, um, still coming up with the right way to say it, but it's, uh, uh, it's a trope in drumming. It's really common. You see lots and lots of drummers end up with something like this. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons is, is for the feet. So when you're sitting at balance, Right? And, and you curl a little bit, the weight goes forward. One of the cures for that is actually to lean back. Now the weight of my body is going directly over the seat, uh, but that frees up my legs again. And so now my legs are free to move. Right? So yeah. that, that's one. Uh, there's another reason, but we don't have time to get sure. into that. Yeah. But, uh, um, but that's, that's for the legs. But, you know, and, and when you curl, when you lean back, that does, that relieves the pressure off of the legs, but it creates another problem, which is the arms. Right? So, if you sit up at balance and you wave your arms over the head, try this at home if you want. Um, just make sure you're not going to hit anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and just take note of how much energy it takes to wave your arms, to move your arms, mm. right? The, uh, um, just how much effort it's taking you to do those movements, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then collapse, and you can exagger exaggerate your, your posture for... for a greater effect, you'll, you'll notice a bigger difference mm -hmm. the more you collapse, but then m wave your arms over your head again, and you'll notice a huge difference in the simple effort it takes you to mm -hmm. move, mm -hmm. right? So while leaning back like this, that takes the pressure off of your legs again, at least takes the weight off of your legs again, it doesn't do anything for your arms. Mm -hmm. And so now your arms are still um, uh, impinged upon, they're still, they're still yeah. being pulled down, right? And the same muscles, and this is a, a general truth about the body, the way the body works, is that the body is designed to, be, to work as a whole, right? Mm -hmm. they, uh, when you're talking about arm muscles, you can talk about arm muscles, but some of those arm muscles are attached to the head. Mm. And if you are moving your head around, that's 
affecting the way that you, you use your arm. And some of those arm muscles are attached to your ribs, some of them are attached to your spine, all the way down from the, from the top vertebrae all the way to the bottom, and even to the hips. And so, uh, and if you activate those arm muscles, you're pulling on the head, you're pulling on everything else, and if you're like this, you're actually pulling the arms as well, and you're pulling everything out of line, hmm. right? And so you don't want that. Why do you think, why do drummers don't notice that then? And they don't, they, because I mean, how many drummers do you see that are slouch and aren't really playing with that proper posture, but yet they're still able to get good sound or at least be able to look like or sound like they're playing decent drums? Oh, well, you can play amazing drums with terrible posture. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, I, I can list you uh, a, a lot of people that play amazingly well with, with not the best posture, and there's a lot of people that have amazing posture not really that good at the drums. <laughs> the, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not, a, you know, it's, it's not sure. a direct relationship, but it's a, it modifies it, right? Gotcha. And one of the big reasons that people don't notice is because what is good posture? What position are you talking about? Or you know, what is the concept? Because mm -hmm. it's not really a position. It's not a, you know, if I just get myself in this spot, line this up, then I'll be perfect. It's, it's, not, it's not that, it's an idea, it's a concept, it's a way of paying attention to your body. And this is the other one which is that uh, a big reason why people don't have better posture is that they don't listen to their body. They're not paying attention to that, right? It's really easy, uh, you know, especially with something like the drum set. The drum set's confusing. You know, it, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of input. There's a lot of things to think about. And you got a lot of pressure on you. You have to keep the time right. You have to do this. You know, you got the click. And you can, you can spend the whole time listening at the click, listening at the click, you know, and you forget what your body's telling you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. then you start to get in the habit of doing it that way. And then your body adjusts to being in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then all of a sudden it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, you know, it might feel weird if you are used to sitting like this to, to sit up. You know, it, it might feel very, very strange. Yeah. M wouldn't necessarily be bad, but it might feel weird, mm -hmm. right? Just because the, the body conforms to the way that you use it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Yeah. So, so you're saying posture is the, one of the, the biggest things to look at as a drummer. You've seen so many people with bad posture. Mm -hmm. You wish you can go to each one of their houses, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> and I was nervous when I was playing on his kit. <laughs> I, he was just sitting there staring at me. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sitting right, all right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm here behind the kit going, oh, I gotta be right, I gotta be right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and especially with a fisheye lens over here, because it all looks... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Camera. Keep that in mind. That's a fisheye lens when you go to that camera, so it looks yeah. like his back is arched, but yeah. it isn't. You can tell if these lines are, are bent, then it's not me, it's not me. <laughs> all right, man. So, that's number one, right? So, so just to review, uh, the way that you sit is a modifier for your physical technique. Mm -hmm. Right, it uh, it will make the way that you play it it'll make the process of playing easier. Right. So when you the say the work that your muscles have to do. So when you say um, when you say posture, people go rigid and stuff. Mm -hmm. So how do you know what the best posture is then for yourself? Oh, that's an excellent question. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> the like, what does posture mean? Yeah. Right. There's, so there's a lot of different ideas of posture, and there's a lot of different guides for it. And this is the one that I found that I like the best. It's adapted from Alexander Technique, if you're familiar with that. Um, and it's the six points of balance. The, these points are not good posture. These point, the six points of balance is a tool. A th it's a rule of thumb that you can use to find if you're in roughly the right position or not. Okay. Right? These positions are uh, the, what's called the, the Atlanto occipital joint, which is in between. I'll grab this guy here. Bones time. All right. All right. Do, do. do you have a name for this guy? No, I just got him yesterday. Right before I, I came. There, so that would be, oh, got it. I don't know if you can see it in there. Yeah, good. All right, so right there. That's the joint in between the skull and the, uh, uh, the, the topmost vertebrae, called the atlas. And the, the, the bottom plate of the skull is called the occiput, so atlanto-occipital, or AO joint. Uh, you, can, you can imagine it as being directly... The overhead shots on this are probably awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, as, as directly in between the ears. <laughs> Anyway, joking around. <laughs> the, uh, um, uh, yeah, so uh, it's not precisely in between the ears. If you look over here, 
you'll see that little hole right there, that's your ear hole, mm -hmm. that's the ear canal. Um, and it is just below that, but as a rule of thumb, you can think of this spot right here. And if you just sort of look up and down, you, you got a little bit of movement there uh, without, without sequencing through the rest of the spine. So you just have a little bit of movement there that can help you identify the feeling at mm -hmm. that joint. And you have a lot of sensory receptors there. So you have a fairly loud signal coming in to, to be able to find that spot. But that one spot is, uh, is, is a key for, for developing good balance. Uh, you also have the shoulder joints. Now the shoulder itself is a point of much confusion, but uh, uh, that would, what I'm talking about is right here. You know, sort of the ball and the socket joint right there. That's, that would also be the next one. Then you'd have the lumbar spine, which are these guys right here. Mm -hmm. And then you would have, if you're sitting, it's only four, and you have these guys right here. Uh. <laughs> I don't know if you can see how we do this. I usually have something like a full-size one, oh, but I couldn't. Bring it Couldn't bring it in there. They yeah. wouldn't let you. You had to pay for another seat on the floor. <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> yeah, so I don't know if you can see this maybe here. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you see how the, the, these bones here, mm -hmm. how those sort of the point of contact uh, between the body and the, you know, whatever it is that you're sitting on mm -hmm. and the seat, right? And then the other two when you're standing are the knees and the ankles. Pretty straightforward. And uh, so... So those are six points to keep... Um, to be aware of, I guess. Yeah, and so, so what those are is if, you, if those are all aligned so that, um, uh, you know, so if I'm gonna stand up here for a second and drop my piece out, but uh, sure. um, the, uh, uh, if those are directly on top of each other, that's your, that's your tool for alignment. So maybe I'll stand off here to the side. Oh, that looks good. And so those are gonna be roughly one on top of the other. So, you know, so you feel like cut me in half, Right there, you'll mm -hmm. cut each of those in half okay. when I am at balance. And that's going to give you that sense of effortlessness that you felt when you were holding, holding the guitar. guitar up, yeah, right? yeah. If one of those is out of, out of line, mm. then the rest of them get sort of pushed and pulled, and now there's a lot more weight going on. Hmm. You know, there's, there's a lot more work going on, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I put this forward, and this one has to pull back a little bit, and now everything is out. Mm -hmm. you know, for, so this is the standard American posture, mm -hmm. like that. They uh, just sort of collapse and pull down, right? The uh, uh, Brazilian posture, same way. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Chinese posture off often is this, a little bit, a little bit back. And, you know. Okay. So there's there's different ways of of standing. There's different kinds of posture, but uh, but if you just get everything lined up, that should you know serve as as a general tool mm -hmm. for. For, for developing good posture when you're sitting or standing or moving, you know, between steps even. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll be able to find that support. And uh, the, the next question, oh, thanks. Go ahead. That, uh, um, that, that you asked is, is how are you gonna know mm -hmm. when you have good, good posture, right? Yeah. Well, you know, the, 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 the points of balance, um, and these are all outlined in my book, um, the, the points of balance are a tool, right? It's not the thing, right? The, so the way that you know is you listen to your body. That's the only way you can know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, can, you, can get, you can build yourself a room full of mirrors and you can spend a lot of time looking and you're like, oh, yeah, moving, 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 moving. You know, but the fact of the matter is everybody's different mm -hmm. to some degree. I mean, dif different-ish. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the most people are, uh, what's the best way to say it? There's, Unique? So, the, well, there's unique. Well, people are, are remarkably consistent. You know, there, there's, there's so much about the body that is consistent from everybody. You know, and I'm a big believer that, that people are very, they're pretty much the same. People are people, there's, there's a huge amount of consistency, but there's also variation. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the way that you, the, you know, the way that you sit might have to be adapted a little bit you know, from the way that somebody else sits. Mm -hmm. And so if you see a diagram in a book, that might work for whoever wrote the diag whoever wrote the book, you know, but it might not quite work for you. Or maybe you have something else. Maybe you have another, another thing mm -hmm. that's, uh, uh, you know, that's causing, you know, that, ha that, that I don't know the best way to say it. Uh, you have something else that's, you know, throws a, a wrench into the mix. Sure, that, okay. That causes you to, to have to adapt and to change things up a little bit. You know, for example, here's one, uh, about 10% of the population. So these bones here, 
Remember I talked about these bones here? Uh, for about 10% of the population, they're kind of pointy. Hmm. So for most of us, they're, they're fairly round, but for one out of 10, they're kind of pointy. And what that means is that if you're sitting on a hard seat, it, you wear out, it starts to hurt, mm. you know, even bruise, mm. um, okay. if, if you sit there for long enough, yeah. right? Uh, and you might think that you're crazy, but you're just a little bit different than the rest. Yeah, okay. you know? And I'm sure that a few people out there are like, oh, that's me. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's not me, I'm lucky, but, you know, but for some people it sure, is. Sure, I and get it, yeah. And if that is you, you just need a cushy seat. Yeah. That's, that's the solution. Bring a pillow, sit on it. Yeah. Fair enough. But, uh, um, yeah. So, uh, anyways, that leads me into the next big thing about how you sit, which is injury. So, I'm going to set this guy back here real quick. Okay. So, the, the second thing is that the body is designed to work in, sort of in, in a certain way. You know, within within the tolerances, mm -hmm. and when you are, when you work out of those tolerances, you can overload parts of the body, and that can cause injury, and that can cause. I mean, I, I'm being very general here because there's a lot of ways that it can happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, but for example, the head itself weighs about 10, 12 pounds, and the research is that when when you're in line, it, your muscles are doing 10 to 12 pounds of work, mm -hmm. uh, but when you're out of line a little bit. Uh, then, then, so I think it's 15 degrees out of line. Um, I could be wrong, uh, but uh, it the the amount of work that your muscles have to do is now 30. It doubles, mm -hmm. and when you go all the way down to here, as if you're going to look at your cell phone, now the, your muscles are doing 60 pounds worth of work. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. It's it's a it's a big change, and mm -hmm. if you stress an area of the body, if you put that kind of load onto an area of the body repeatedly, 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 then it'll wear out. Mm -hmm. That's, just, that's, that's, the, way it is, that's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so when you sit well, you keep everything lined up, you keep everything in its, in its tolerances. You know, I mean, you can move away you know, as I move like this or like this. You know, any which way you move, that's fine. Your body is designed to handle that. Mm -hmm. you know, but you don't want to stay here forever. Right? You don't want to stay here for 10 hours in this position. Well, it looks great on the fisheye. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, the, uh, uh, you, you don't want to stay in, you know, like this for a very long time because that's going to cause, cause issues over time. Yeah. And by developing good posture and a home position so that even if you make a movement that's out of line, that's no problem at all, just come back to home and have that be your center position. Right? The, cool. uh, um, and, and that's going to help you avoid injury. The, uh, the number three is actually, I find this one to be the most important one. And this is one that I started to understand when I was studying with Bernard Purdy, mm. uh, which is emotional. Okay. The way that you sit changes the way that you feel. So to, to get into this one, I'm going to go a little bit far around the barn and start talking about how emotions work in the brain. So I'm going to be very general with this. But okay. I'm going to start with uh, um, the amygdala. So the amygdala is, it, it's Latin for almond, and you have two kind of behind each ear. Um, and they do a lot of things. They're part of the brain, I should say. And uh, they, they do a lot of things, but one of the things that they do is they work kind of like Congress for fear. On, and they decide whether or not there is something to be afraid of. Hmm. So the different parts of the brain, they all send their representative to the amygdala, and then they vote. Right? So the question might be, uh, is that a snake on the ground or is it a stick, right? And if they vote that it's a snake, well, I'll, I'll say if they vote it's a stick, there's nothing to be afraid of. They sort of stand down, cancel, and you were probably never aware that there was a question at all. Mm -hmm. But if they vote that there is something to be afraid of, that there is a danger that, say, that's a snake, right? Mm -hmm. Then the same thing happens no matter what the cause is. And this is true if it's a snake or if it's speaking in front of other people yeah. or whatever. It's always the same, and which is they put cortisol into the brain and put adrenaline into the bloodstream. Cortisol is not directly related, but uh, it, it's good to know. So one of the things cortisol does that's really relevant to drummers is it works like tunnel vision to the thing that's dangerous. Okay. So if you're walking through the woods and a bear jumps out at you, mm -hmm. you don't have time to think about the rock that looks exactly like Miley Cyrus. <laughs> you might go for a mint on eBay, but you can't pay attention to it because there's a bear and you've got to run. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's cortisol. Right? It's a magnet. It's a giant magnet to the thing that's dangerous. 
Mm. Right? So you pay attention to that and nothing else. Mm. So another example is that if you are in the 7-Eleven and somebody walks in with a gun and starts to rob the place, where are your eyes going to be? Towards the exit, hopefully. Towards the gun. Yeah, and the gun. Because the gun is the thing that causes danger, right? Yeah. You're not even going to look at the face of the person who's robbing it. Mm -hmm. Right? And this is, this is a real, word pro re real world problem <laughs> <coughs> because you know, police will interview people and they might think that they you know, can identify the person exactly, but it turns out you know, if you look at the footage, they just stared at the gun and their eyes never left. Yeah. You know, but that's the action of cortisol yeah. to the thing that is dangerous. Right? And this is a big problem for, for, for musicians because if you're on stage and you're worried about you know, how well you're going to you know, play or whether you're going to get this gig, that's what you're going to be thinking about at the show instead of what you need to be thinking about to put on a good show. Yeah. Right? Anyway. Okay, I see. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> so how do you avoid that? How do you... Oh, uh, that's, that's a good question, but we probably don't have time to talk about it. You have to sign up and listen to A Guide to Healthy Drumming because we're going to talk about it in there, I'm sure. But. Yeah, I think we'll do a, a little YouTube, another tip. Yeah, we'll see what that, we can do. Yeah. Cover some of that. There anyways. you go. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's a whole other, whole <laughs> sure, other thing. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but, yeah, so, 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 right, that's cortisol anyways. Now, the second one is adrenaline. You've probably heard about it. But adrenaline, what it does is it gets into the blood and... When it gets to the heart, it tells the heart to open up and uh, to, to beat faster so it can provide more blood. You can think of adrenaline in the body like battle stations, right? It, uh, so it, it wants to provide more energy to the, to the brain and to the muscles. And so what it does is it tells everything that's not the brain and the muscles to shut down. Mm -hmm. This is why you get goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Which is that uh, goosebumps are always there, but they're like a, a islands at low tide. When the blood leaves, they show up. And this is the same thing happens when you're cold, hmm. right? The blood just leaves the area, and so now you see them, hmm. right? Okay. This is why you get uh, uh, butterflies in your stomach, it's because okay. that's your stomach shut down. Hmm. That's what that feeling is. It's no way. all the blood's gone. That's exactly what that is. Yeah, and uh, um, you know, if if it's an, if it's enough, you know, you might have other problems. Yeah. You know, bladder problems or whatever, because the, you it just shut down. Yeah. It's, doesn't matter if you're going to die, yeah. right? So the, meanwhile, the, the blood to the brain and the muscles goes up by about 30%, right? Give you energy to, to, to fight or run away or do what sure. you need to do, right? Yeah. And to pay attention and to think about what you need to pay attention to, right? Mm -hmm. It's also, also really important, right? But at this point, you're still not afraid. Your brain has made the decision that there's something to be afraid of but you are not yet afraid. Another part of the brain is monitoring the body and is looking at sort of the status of, of what the rest of the body is. It's got a feed of all the information the body is providing, and it's like, okay, wait, okay. Heart's beating fast, skin shut down, stomach, da, 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 da. I must be afraid. Mm -hmm. And then it comes to that conclusion, and that decides then what it is that, what emotion that you're feeling. And that process is really complex. Mm. You know, but one of, the other th one of the things that it pays attention to is your posture. Mm. You know, if you think about it, what does a gorilla do when it wants to show it's powerful? Oh, it Bronze its shoulders, stands, stands up, up, puffs its chest. Oh, yeah. What about a peacock? Fluffs his tail out, I suppose. Right? Yeah. Uh, you know, point after point. You got uh, uh, pufferfish, you got uh, um, uh, cobra, mm -hmm. right? Birds. Jared? <laughs> <laughs> We've all seen it here. <laughs> so, the, uh, yeah, you know, insects, you know, fish, yeah. every, every kind of animal there is, they all do the same thing. They, they get big, they take up more space. Yeah. They want to show that they're bigger and more powerful. And, um, this is interpreted as the brain as being confident and comfortable, right? Yeah. You know, on the other hand, if, you know, what does a dog do when it wants to show it's not powerful, when it's given up, when it's weak? Just cowers. Cowers, Tailing right? That's the word. Yeah. Cower, right? Like yeah. coward, it's afraid. It's, it, it shrinks and it, takes, and it takes up less space. Mm -hmm. And again, this is a signal to the brain itself 
that, that you're not in control, that there's a big problem, that you're afraid, mm -hmm. right? Because if you think about it, what's the physical difference of being afraid and being excited? Hmm. Well, excited, you're, you're jumping up, it's afraid, you're cowering. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, 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 they're really, really similar, right? Yeah. And so when it gets into you know, how the brain understands things, well, I mean, that's... That's a thing. Yeah, that's pretty, <laughs> that it's going pretty deep. Really, really <laughs> complex, yeah. though, right? But, but one of the things that you can do to help yourself feel better is to take up your space. Right? And, and, to sit, and to be open and to sit well. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna stand up again. Okay. So check this out. If, uh, um, uh, so if I sit at balance, or sorry, stand at balance, you'll see, you know, see how tall I am and see how wide my shoulders are, right? And when I collapse, when I slouch, you'll see that I get shorter and my shoulders roll in, hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right? It's, you know, it's not a huge visible difference. But emotionally, it's a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the research is that it, it's, it's actually a big thing. They, the research is that if you stand at what they call a high power pose, like Superman, mm -hmm. if you do that for three minutes a day, you're actually going to change your biochemistry. You're going to change what you're physically made out of. Hmm. Right? You're kidding. So three minutes a day at the power stands. Yeah. Uh, I can do that. Yeah, especially if you go on stage, if you're like, or, or like an interview or talking in front of class or whatever. Yeah. If you, if you, you know, sit open, you know, the idea is to get big, take up as much space as you can. You know, so something like this. Yeah. Do that for a few minutes before you, you go out and you'll feel more confident and feel better. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But, but uh, um, just maybe not do it in front of the rest of the class. <laughs> <laughs> like you did, just did right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, right. So. So, but this really goes to the heart of why I think this is the most important because when you feel confident, when you feel open, you're ready to make music. Mm -hmm. You know, because music is the connection between people, mm -hmm. right? It's not the notes that you play, I mean, they're important, mm -hmm. but that's not what they are, mm -hmm. right? Music is how those notes affect people, how you are affected by those notes yourself, mm -hmm. how you're affected by those around you. It's the connection between people that matters. And as you feel open and comfortable, you are in a position where you can extend yourself and connect more effectively, where you can connect better and make better music than you would if you're sort of collapsed in. Hmm. You know, and now, you know, you, you, you know, to repeat your question before, you know, what about these other guys who sit like this but make amazing music? You know, it's, it, doesn't, it, it's, it doesn't mean you can't do it, but think about how much better they could be. Yeah. Because, because it really is a thing. Well, also you talk about injury and pain, and you've seen drummers, you've seen drummers, and I'll, I won't name any names, but you've seen drummers that have been playing, had a great career, but at the age that they're at now, they just can't do it anymore. Yeah. Or they're, they're just stopping because now they, their body just is shutting down because they've been doing it so wrong for so long. You know, and we're all getting older here. It's not like uh, um, there's a fountain of youth where we can just keep drinking from. I mean, this is gonna have, you know, stuff like that's gonna happen to all of us at some point. Mm -hmm. So best be prepared, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you develop good habits and that'll see you through. Yeah. You know, I'll name names. There's Phil Collins. You know, I mean, I, I can name that name because he named it himself. There you go. You know, yeah. he, he crushed the vertebrae, he crushed a nerve uh, because uh, the, I believe the direct quote is because of the position I drum in. Uh, <laughs> It's like that, and eventually it just wore out. You know, the over time, you know, the, the the tension ratcheted up, and the you know the ability of his body to resist and to heal, uh, you know, flowed down, and then all of a sudden, crack. Mm. You know, it's a sad thing. He's an amazing musician. I love his music. Yeah, just brilliant music. It's it's just a sad the sad thing that that stuff happens, but yeah. it does. Yeah. Well, Neil Peart doesn't play as, as much anymore. He's he's past that point now too. I'm sure he's feeling a lot of pain and you know there's uh, uh, there's just tons of examples like that. Now, you've talked quite a bit about posture here. We got about 20 minutes left. Okay. Um, why did you focus so much on posture uh, besides your hands and your feet and all that kind of stuff? Why is this so, such an important topic for you? Well, uh, like I said, uh, it's the most important. The, it modifies everything else. And so if your posture is out, you can work, you can work forever on your hands. Then you can get pretty good, but you know, maybe you, you know, if, if, for example, if you are sitting and you're collapsing and your shoulders are rolled forward a little bit, you're gonna have trouble lifting up and you try to lift that up, you know, you, 
you know, rise above that plane, you're going to put a lot of pressure onto your shoulders and, mm -hmm. and cause some sort of injury, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't want to put yourself in that position, you know. And besides, it's just more difficult to do it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So imagine the speed at which you could get to if you didn't do that, yeah. right? You know, I mean, I, I hear some, some drummers ask me, well, I'm, I'm doing pretty well, you know. Why, why, do I, why should I care if, if, totally. you know, if, if I'm sitting like this? That's because, you know, I'm doing pretty well already. Yes. Right? Well, I mean, you could be doing better, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and, you know, looking down the road, you know, there's, you know, you got to do it. Uh, to quote Bernard Purdy, Mother, Mother Nature won't let you mm -hmm. stay like that. You have to come down. You have to rest. Mm -hmm. And you've got to build it into, what, into your basic technique, right? That's why I like the, um, you know, foot technique. We'll get to that. Uh, it's like why I like this. You build rest right from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? And then that way you're not wearing yourself out, just sitting. Totally. Now, let's uh, move on to the feet and the hands, because I know you still want to talk about the feet mm -hmm. and the hands. Uh, we, are, we are running low on time, and I do want to get to questions as well. So uh, we'll spend about 10 or 15 here talking about that, and then I'll gather some questions as well. Um, and then maybe you can play us out at the end too. Yeah, absolutely. So the, uh, the, the next thing, the next most important thing uh, is the feet. And that's for a similar reason as, the, the, as posture is important because the legs are heavy and they need to support the, the weight of the leg, uh, right? It's gotta go somewhere. And if you pick your leg up, now you have to adjust your whole seat uh, and the way that you sit and your posture is out if, you, if your legs are up out of the air, right? Mm -hmm. right? So you want the weight of your leg to go into the pedal. Right? Makes sense. So uh, I say it this way a lot of times, which is if the, the pedal isn't holding your foot up, what is? Mm -hmm. Right? You are, right? And that's work and that's effort. And that's, and that's effort that you could be using to play the drums. Mm. Right? The, uh, um, so, so what you want is whenever you're not using it, you want your leg to be completely turned off and just rested on the pedal. Right? To, uh, you know, the, the next thing is. The, the next big idea here is use gravity to your advantage, mm -hmm. right? You want to use what's available to you to your advantage to be the most successful person you are, no matter your situation, mm -hmm. right? But in, you know, f for drumming, you can think of it this way. You know, all I need to do to operate the pedal is to, is to add a little bit of downward force onto the pedal board. If I just drop my leg onto the pedal, that's all I need to do. Right? So, the, uh, um, I don't know if we can switch to, oh, the foot cam is on, good. Right? And you can see by doing this, I'm not, in, I'm not into the, uh, uh, I'm not pressing into the head. It's, it's bouncing out freely, and I'm just dropping. I'm just dropping my foot onto that, that, that pedal. What I don't want to do is this. And I also don't want to do this. To, to press my heel into the, the floor and tap at that pedal. That's going to wear out this front section. Uh, it's going to give you shin splints. Yes. And, uh, uh, and also really limit your technique. Ask me how I know. <laughs> 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 I did it like that for years and years and years. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. I didn't know any better. Yeah. And I finally... You know, was forced to because I just couldn't do the things that I needed to do for the shows I was playing. Yeah, I just couldn't do it, and I didn't know why I couldn't do it. You know, and I finally was like, I just got to do it a different way. Yeah, and I'm hard headed. That took a long time. Yeah, you know, it just a you know, long time. <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, so so it doesn't mean you can't play heel down, but you don't want to plant your heel and then tap at that pedal. Yeah, right, because. What happens is that as, well, the, when the, yeah, that'll work. Put it on the floor, Tom. Yeah. There you go, switch it. Wasting all the time just moving the bones around. <laughs> so uh, what happens is that as you lift your foot, right, you see that? When the front of the part, front of the foot goes up, I'll do this one. When the front of the foot goes up, the heel goes down. When the heel goes up, the front of the foot goes down. Right? It works like, let's do it this way, like that. 
right? Yep. It just works like that, right? And so if your heel is already planted on that footboard, right? If your heel is already planted on the footboard and you lift your foot up, that's driving your heel down into the footboard. But your heel can't go into the footboard. And so what happens is that the rest of your leg gets pushed up and you're using these, the smallest muscles in your leg, just about, to lift the entire weight of your leg over overworks your leg and you end up with shin splints and you're like, ah, and it's hard to play and you're like, ah. You know. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that again is not good for anybody. You know, so, but the simple solution is just, uh, and this is what I tell my students for their technique, is to just drop your foot on the board. Use gravity to your advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the metaphor here is riding a bike. Is it easier to ride uphill or downhill? Mm -hmm. Right? Downhill. Right? Mm -hmm. You can go pretty fast letting gravity do the work for you. Yeah. Right? You can go uphill. It'll work. But at the expense of a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. Right? And once you start coasting downhill, then you can start using your own effort and go even faster. Right? This is, you know, constant release, other mm -hmm. techniques. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they do. You just drop your foot. Right? And then you can push off. Tap strokes. Right? That's that that's that tap that heel up tap stroke. So like a drop, heel up tap, and then an up stroke. That's pretty straightforward. And that'll give you a lot of power, uh, a lot of volume, mm -hmm. right? Because you got the weight of your leg back there, right? I'm not using any energy. Here I'm not even doing anything. I'm lifting my leg and just dropping it. That's a perfectly ser serviceable note. Right? Big time, yeah. Uh, you know, and then you can use your power to, you know, to, to, to play music with it, to do finesse, to do, play it, use it in the way that you want to use it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, uh, but that's the thing with, with, with feet. You know? And then the other thing with feet is that you want to set up well. Yeah. And, and maybe we'll talk uh, a little bit about setup if we get a chance at well, another, maybe uh, tomorrow, but. We're gonna do a whole course. Like I said before in the very beginning, it's called a guide to healthy drumming, and part of that is ergonomic setup, feet, hands, posture, or sorry, seat, you call it, mm -hmm. and then troubleshooting your technique. So it's gonna be quite in depth, and we'll go into more on that in that course. Yeah. So what about hands? Quickly talk so, about your hands. So, the, the, the thing about the hands is, as far as I'm concerned, they're less important than the rest, because you don't have this massive weight uh, on them, mm -hmm. right? The, 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 the arms are supported and are floating, floating freely yeah. uh, on the, uh, uh, the rest of the body. And so, once, so don't worry about your hand technique, I would recommend. You know, unless, of course, you've got some pain or some other issue, you know, the, do what you need to do. But, uh, um, uh, but I would focus on your, your posture and your feet first because that's gonna give you a stable base for your arms to work again, mm -hmm. right? But when I talk about the hands, I just talk about what the body does and how different techniques employ that movement, right? So, you know, you can start at the end with finger technique, right? The, the fingers, they do this. That's just, that's what they do, mm -hmm. right? So if you hold the fulcrum here and you do that, you end up with, with this. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Finger technique, right? Yep. You guys are probably familiar with it already, right? You got French grip, works really well. Um, the, uh, um, the thing about French technique, or French grip and finger technique, is that it is really great for playing fast mm -hmm. and quiet. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you're jazz, you might want to consider finger technique. It's, it's built for it almost, right? Yeah. That's exactly, it gives you exactly what you want, right? The, uh, um, it's not gonna give you a lot of power though. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna, if you wanna uh, if you want to bash it, you probably don't want to hold it this way, right? Makes sense. You yeah. can you can get extra power. Uh, if you have your wrist with a little throw this way, side to side movement, like with that kind of thing. But you want to limit that. You don't want that to be a go-to movement uh, for two reasons. One, there's not a whole lot of power this way, mm -hmm. and. And it's not gonna give you what you want as well as some other things will do. Uh, but more importantly, there's not a lot of range of motion this way either. So the, the term hyperextension, it means to extend beyond what it should do. And 
when most people use it, they mean I just injured myself. Mm-hmm. Whereas the, the real definition, the, you know, the medical definition of hyperextending is just beyond the normal range. And whenever you start hyperextending, you're starting to wear and tear the connective tissues and the surrounding tissues of, of the structure. You know, in this case, the wrist, right? And, uh, and if you do that too many times in a row, it's going to just wear out. Yeah. You know, so, so you want to you wanna limit that. But some is fine. You know, no problem to do it some. Mm-hmm. You just don't want to do it all the time and, and rely on it. Mm-hmm. But if you but if you want to do it all the time, you're probably not using the right technique. So what you one thing easy thing that you can do is switch to German. Right, German grip. You know, now you got the wrists going up and down like that. Mm-hmm. Right, you've probably seen plenty of people play this way too. It's a great technique. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, um, This one's the one with the two and the ten. Right? Mm-hmm. That, that, that works wonderfully. Uh, mm-hmm. Gives you a lot of control. Gives you more power than you have in French. Gives you plenty of speed. Uh, allows you to play a lot of soft notes in a row, a lot of loud notes in a row. Mix them up as much as you want. Works really, really well. Mm-hmm. Right? The, uh, um, and then uh, moving on, you got... Uh, um, uh, uh, well, I'll say it. one more thing while we're on the wrist which is that the wrist does this movement. It does this movement, side to side movement. <laughs> Hi. There it is. And, uh, uh, and the other thing it does is it actually gets a little bit longer. It, you can stretch it out. I'm not gonna be able to see it too well on the camera, but it gets a little bit longer if you uh, like roll it down like across something. Like okay. that, you'll yeah. see it stretch and you'll be able to feel it lengthen just a little bit. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't turn. What do you mean by turning? Well, uh, in English we say turn your wrist, right? To, to do this kind of thing, mm. right? The wrist itself doesn't do that. Okay. That movement is the elbow. Okay, yeah. Right? And so in the elbow, there's an elbow. You have two joints in the elbow. This is, the first one is this hinge joint right here. See, I don't know how well you guys can see that. Uh, maybe switch to this one, I'll give them a close-up. So you guys see how that works right there? Yep. Uh, it works just like a, a door hinge. It's called a hinge joint, and, and it just goes up and down. This point right here, that's the tip of your elbow. So if you like bang it on a door, and like, ah, that's, that's that right there. Um, and, but the other joint is right here. This is a pivot joint, and it rotates. See how that works? Mm-hmm. It's just spinning back and forth. And that's what, that's the primary joint for, for, for doing this. That's, that's what I'm using to do this, to rotate, to turn the wrist over. So for traditional grip players. So for, yeah, for traditional grip players, this is the primary movement mm-hmm. right there. Um, it's important to note that, uh, again, the body is not designed to work as, as one thing. There's, um, it's the, uh, the body's designed to work as a whole, and so you don't want to limit the movement to only one structure. And so if I want to do this, I'm going to be using this joint here, the pivot joint in the elbow, the, uh, quite a lot, but I'm also going to be using the shoulder. The shoulder itself can rotate. Uh, this guy here, I'm going to bring him back for a moment. Go. See what I mean? Yep. Now, your shoulder can't move that far because you're not a skeleton, but, right? but, but it can also turn the hand over by itself. Right? And you can also rotate from this joint right here. This guy will not do that at all. Well, like, actually, it looks like he's a little bit, well, a little bit, it's kind of surprised, but because uh, he's tied down with a metal, metal pen right there. But, but in real life, there's actually a huge amount of movement in the shoulder here. And these shoulder blades move everywhere. They go down, they go up, they go all the way almost to the ear. Uh, when you lift your arm in the air. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. The, uh, so there's a huge amount of movement here. These, don't, these aren't pinned down in any sort of way. Uh, they are fro- floating free on top. Got it. Uh, and that's, that's another big thing. But when you start talking about the elbow and how the elbow is used in drumming, well, there's a couple things. Now I need to grab those sticks. You need to grab those sticks, yeah. 
fire it out. You got the other one there. So, uh, You're getting a workout in, in this lesson here. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, um, so so one of the one of the one technique that the elbow movement is famous for is molar technique, mm -hmm. right? And so you know, there's talk about the elbow pull, uh, the elbow pumping motion, right? All right, actually, well, let's talk about traditional technique first, or traditional grip, right? So with traditional grip, that's the movement. That's your primary movement. And you can get a lot of power this way. You can get a lot of power. Here's me. <laughs> the, uh, um, so, uh, that's there's there's very large muscles that move that mm -hmm. uh, that, that that work at that uh, that that can help you move around to do that. It's it's a great technique. Um, you know the thing about tech, uh, traditional grip is you just want to set up your drum set to facilitate traditional grip mm -hmm. because otherwise the warning is what happens is that if uh, you can see the angle of my drumstick here um, up with a snare and you see how big this angle is. Right? Mm -hmm. What people tend to do is this. Mm -hmm. Is to, 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 to move their whole shoulder down. Right? In order to keep that, that pop. You're going to get the best bounce out of that drum by hitting um, with a, I call it a playing angle, but it's, it's the angle between the drum head and the stick. When that's as small as you can get it without hitting the rim, mm -hmm. if you don't want to hit the rim, um, that's, you're going to get the best bounce out. You're going to get the best energy con conservation. Um, it's going to come straight out as opposed to bouncing off in a direction. Yeah. Um, better, you know, you guys probably know all that, right? Uh, so, and that's why people do that is because they, they get the physics on their side a little bit better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, you know, when you do that, you also impinge the shoulder, you drop everything down, and you create other problems that, that, that could... You know, cause something like thoracic outlet or some other other issues in the shoulder, you know, or farther down in the wrist, you know, or elbow, other farther down in other structures, or you know, maybe even your knee. The body's kind of weird that way, <laughs> but <laughs> it's, sure. it's kind of weird that way. The, uh, but uh, uh, anyways, so that's traditional. Then you got molar, right? With molar, you have what's called a whipping stroke, right? And the movement is a lot like a whip. And I'm a big fan of molar for the drum set. Yeah. So, uh, uh, for, for a few reasons. One is it allows you to move, play across multiple services really easily. So I can get from here and skip across. I can build that into the molar technique, into my molar stroke to get from one drum to the other. You know, and I get that second drum because mm -hmm. I played the first. Mm -hmm. Because of the way that I played the first one, it just got there, mm -hmm. right? Whereas with another technique, with finger technique, for example, I kind of have to play and then reposition and then play, Yeah. right? And so you see guys with, with finger technique do something like this. Right? And reposition between each drum, between each surface. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that was obviously greatly exaggerated, but but you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. So, uh, uh, but Moeller allows you to, to play. You know, and you get a lot of, a lot of speed with Moeller. And uh, the other thing is that it allows you to play musically very easily. So, uh, at some sorts of musical. <laughs> some styles of musically, I should say. <laughs> because, you know, and with the drums, you want to outline the, the, the rhythm. You yeah. want to outline the meter and you want to get the pulse really strong. And if you make every note even, totally even, so that every note sounds like each uh, like with, with has the same volume, you're going to end up creating a certain amount of tension in, in your playing. And this is wonderful when you want it. Mm -hmm. it's, it it's used in a lot of brilliant recordings. Uh, it's, very, it's a very musical choice. Uh, uh, and this, or this, you know. You know, do do wonderfully to create that, but with Muller you end up with this because you're doing this pickup stroke. Mm -hmm. uh, you end up with a loud soft dynamic where it goes loud soft, loud soft, loud soft, right? Yep. 
And that's just built in, it's baked into the cake. You, you can't do much about it. If you, if you want every note to be completely even, you don't want molar, right? But, uh, uh, but a lot of times you do, because this gives you something that you can use to control your groove, right? just sure. went with the, the downstroke on the downbeats, right? And then I flipped it around. And that whole movement is just built in. It's very easy, very fluid. And, um, you know, I, I like to say that uh, it's sort of like, um, you know, being with a kid's soccer team. You know, everybody gets an award. You know, to have everything be equal volume. You don't really want that. You want the stars to be the stars. If If... If you want those downbeats, if you want the that's going to give those downbeats muscle, right? Mm -hmm. And that's going to provide a lot of heft and size to your, to your groove. Whereas if you flip it around and you make the upbeats louder, you're going to provide a lot of uplift mm -hmm. and bubble. So, so we got to we got to so, leave it there, man. Yeah. It's, it's, well, it's already five o'clock. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a whole hour long lesson tomorrow. This is for Edge members only, but we have a ton of questions. We can't even get to these questions because we're 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 crushed for time right now. Sorry. But what I will say is tomorrow um, at three o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're gonna be doing a Q and A, and it's 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 a topical Q and A. It's a drumming health Q and A uh, with John, and we have I'm gonna use all these questions in here. So if you guys, I'm sorry we can't get to all of them right now, but if you log in tomorrow or if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to check out some of the answers, you, you're going to be able to see an archive version of the Q&A. I've got a lot of questions all the way from what do you think of a throne with the backrests? What do you think of the thrones with this, uh, the hole in the middle? How do you avoid carpal tunnel? How do you avoid sh uh, shin splints? They're all questions in here that we are going to get to, but we're going to have to save that for tomorrow. But I do want you to wrap up this whole concept, the anatomy of drumming. What is the big takeaway for the viewers watching us and the drummers? Is it all about uh, your, your posture? Is it about your, because you talked about hands, you talked about feet. Um, give us this whole lesson kind of in a nutshell here. So the idea is you gotta move your body to play. And you should pay attention to what your body's telling you and know about how your body works so that you can play better. That's it in a nutshell, is you should know what you do so you can do it better. Yeah. That's, listen know, to your body. Listen to your body, yeah. I mean, th so the other thing is that the, the, the abstract knowledge of like the, sh the, the elbows, for example, you, know, you got this one that does this, you got this one that does this, you know, that, that's a concept and that's, that can be really useful as a map so that you can understand and understand what it is that you're feeling, understand how the movements are being made. But that's only a map. What you need is you need to pay attention to your own body to feel yourself and to get to know how things feel and to know what those feelings mean and to be able to, to, to develop this sense and feeling of ease mm -hmm. as you play. Uh, and the only one that can do that is you. you know? And yeah. it, the, the best thing that you can do is to start listening to your body as you play. That's, that's the, the real takeaway for me. I love it. I learned a ton, man, just even with the... Uh, the bones and the skeleton that you brought in to see the joints and see how they work and then showing us the demo in there. Um, learned a lot, even when you're talking about the chemicals in your, in your body that, that gets uh, spread out and, and all that. So, um, but we'll leave it there. Again, guys, if you guys want to learn more about this, you got to check out John Lamb's book, The Anatomy of Drumming. It's an awesome book. You can get it on Amazon. You can go to johnlambdrums.com and get it there as well. Um, or you can win it right now. And if you're watching this on YouTube and it's within 30 days of releasing, all you have to do is submit a comment below saying what your coolest or most favorite part of the lesson was. And we're going to choose three random. And you're not only going to just win The Anatomy of Drumming, you're also going to get John's other two books, which start playing drums. And of course, A Matter of Time. So do that if you're watching this on YouTube. And again, for all you guys watching who submitted questions today, we're going to get to every single one of them, but it'll be on tomorrow's Q&A just on drumming health. A health question and answer with John Lamb. All right, and we're also filming a whole course with him called A Guide to Healthy Drumming, so it's going to be a really cool course. John, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. You're always blessed. welcome. And you're only a couple hours down south. You're in yeah. Oregon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to come up Not here more often, man. I, I plan on it. 
So do you want to play us out with something? Sure. Maybe just groove for us and show us how proper posture looks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>